Hi everyone, I'm back, and this is a much shorter lecture, so, whew, right? Okay, well this is Japan 18.3, Japan number 2, and it corresponds to pages 398 to 401 of your textbook. So prepare yourself much shorter than my last lecture. All right, well let's talk today about how many Japanese traditions are based on nature. Did you know that? Yeah, much of this is due to Japan's natural surroundings. Much of its artwork and literature has focused on the natural world. For instance, there are many poems about the tallest mountain in Japan, Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji is over 12,000 feet tall, and it's a sight to behold, I must say. The prevalence of natural surroundings throughout the arts and literature of Japan shows a great deal of respect for the natural world, or all of these things show a great deal of respect for the natural world. In fact, Japan's many religious traditions often mirror this, with a great deal of respect paid to nature in general. Two belief systems in particular have influenced Japan over time. These include Shinto and Buddhism. Most Japanese people actually practice both of these religions because they serve different purposes. For instance, Shinto ceremonies are used for weddings, typically, in Japan. Buddhist ceremonies are used to show respect for ancestors and are used at funerals. Confucian beliefs are also seen, however, in Japan. All right, let's talk first about Shinto. Shinto is an animistic belief system. It's not an organized religion based on specific prophets or teachings. Rather, it has emerged over time as a way to explain natural phenomenon. Shinto means way of the gods. It is based on the belief that all objects in nature have a kami, or a spirit, attached to them. These spirits are responsible, the Japanese believe, for natural forces or events in natures, like the rain falling, earthquakes, flooding, typhoons, tsunamis, etc. The Japanese have typically made offerings to these kami as a way to control nature and keep things in balance. At Shinto shrines, people often make offerings, or people make offerings, rather, to nature. All right, the next belief system in Japan Buddhism. Buddhism spread to Japan via China and Korea. However, over time, the Japanese modified Buddhist beliefs to fit their own cultural needs. This is known as selective borrowing. Please write that down. It's super important. Selective borrowing. By the 1100s, most samurai had adopted Buddhist beliefs and modified these beliefs to fit Japanese culture with an emphasis on the natural world. The type of Buddhism now practiced in Japan is called Zen Buddhism. Much of the artwork in Japan reflects Zen Buddhist tradition with an emphasis on the natural world. All right, well, what about Confucianism in Japan? Well, although Confucianism isn't widely practiced in Japan as, you know, a belief system, many aspects of Confucian beliefs have appealed to the Japanese. These beliefs have helped to shape modern values in Japan concerning respect for those who are older than you, loyalty similar to filial piety, hard work, and values in education. These values also affected traditional family life in Japan. Japan has historically had a patriarchal society, which means that men are considered the heads of household and are expected to provide for their families. Family members typically show complete loyalty to their head of household. In ancient Japan, the eldest son in a family would typically lead a family after the family died, or the father died, rather. Marriages in early Japan were arranged by the head of household. Women would leave their families after marriage and then would belong to their new husband's family from then on. Japanese society was traditional in that most children took on the occupations of their parents. Women in early Japan had some rights and could certainly inherit property. However, as Confucian values permeated society or became more widespread, women lost many of these rights and were expected to be completely submissive to their heads of household or husbands. Few women learned to read or write, and their educational opportunities were very limited. Feudal Japan was a difficult time to be a woman. Although Confucian values permeate Japanese society, Japanese life was different from life in Japan. For instance, Japanese people under feudalism were expected to give their complete loyalty to their feudal lord and his samurai before their own family. This was different than in China. In Japan, a code of behavior emerged to describe this. 
It was called the Bushido Code, or Way of the Warrior. In European feudal times, this was very similar to what they used to call the Code of Chivalry. You know, uh, the Code of Chivalry was where knights were expected to, um, you know, give service to their lords, be devoted to their god, and devoted to their woman or their lady. See, both chivalry in Europe and Bushido Code in Japan, those are examples of codes of behavior or rules that help keep order and stability in society. Well, part of the Bushido Code included an emphasis on bravery, self-discipline, and honor. If a samurai brought dishonor to his daimyo, his ruler, or family, he was expected to commit ritual suicide called seppuku. Early samurai were also expected to be well-rounded, in the same way that men in Europe during the Renaissance were expected to be universal men, which you're going to learn more about as 10th graders. You know, they had to learn to read a lot, they had to be athletic, they had to be musical and artistic. The universal man. You're going to learn about a scholar named Castiglione next year. So, more on that later. Well, the samurai were expected to be universal men as well. They were expected to be artists, poets, as well as being athletic, well-educated, and brave. Well, under feudalism in Japan, everyone had their place in society. This is called a social hierarchy. Remember the caste system in India? That's also a social hierarchy, or was. And you, you might as well know that this is my favorite term in global history, if I haven't already made that abundantly clear. Just like haricot vert is my favorite word in French, but not my favorite vegetable. Yeah, but I digress. Anyway, under the Japanese social hierarchy, there were three classes of commoners. Peasants, artists, and merchants. Merchants held the lowest place in society because they benefited from the labor of others. Sort of similar to what was going on in China. Some commoners in Japan became wealthy. However, social mobility in Japan, or the ability to move up the social ladder, was not based on wealth. They were still expected to show ultimate respect for the samurai and the daimyo. All people were expected to bow low to the daimyo and samurai as they passed, and they weren't allowed to wear silk clothing. They weren't even allowed to carry weaponry like the samurai who carried two swords. The only hope for social mobility was to marry a pretty daughter off to a lower-ranking samurai. And that, my friends, is just a brief look at some of the belief systems and early feudal society in Japan. Thanks for listening. Bye.